Hello guys, today I'm here with a new tutorial, and in this video, I'm gonna show, how to create open core EFI for Intel desktops, so without a further ado, let's get started. Firstly, you will have to collect some basic hardware info about your target desktop, for which you'll be creating EFI, most people use Windows, so I'm also using Windows for collecting hardware info. To do so, open properties of your PC, and here you can see, my processor is Intel Core i3-10100F. For other info, open your device manager. And here, for knowing your display info, expand display adapters, and as you can see, mine is AMD RX 580. For network info, expand network adapters, and here you can see, it says Realtek Gaming GBE Family Controller. But for creating the EFI, we will also need to know the model of chip used. For that, right click on the controller, and select properties. After that go to Details tab, and then select Hardware IDs from the drop-down list, and here, we need to look up for Vendor ID and Device ID, VEN10 means, Vendor Name, which is Realtek, and Dev8168 is the chip model used. After this, we also need to do the same for knowing our audio specification. For that, expand Sound Controllers, here the first one is AMD HD Audio, which is HDMI Audio, we don't need info of this, second one is Onboard Audio, or you can say internal audio, audio codec is also from Realtek, right click on the controller, then properties, details, and then select hardware IDs from drop down list, and as you can see, same VEN10, and Dev is 887, which is the audio codec. So, that's all the basic info needed, for creating EFI, now for preparing the EFI, you will need to have any device with Mac OS, if you don't have it, you can use VirtualBox or VMware, after installing Mac OS on it, if not, it's a good idea for asking help with your friends. Here on Mac, I have my target PC spec list, OC Gen X, Open Core Configurator, and Open Core Package. All of these are of the same version, that is 7.4. Now, open OC Gen X. And here, as per your CPU select your CPU codename. If you don't know, not to worry, as you can see here, mine is i3-10100F. Simply Google the processor name with ARK, go to the ARK Intel site. Confirm the processor number, and then, remember the codename, for 10100F, codename is Comet Lake, so I'll go with Comet Lake and OC Gen X. Now, go to the Kex tab. Here, leave both the Kex selected, as they are must have Kexts, now go to the next tab. And here, if you plan to use any system monitor software, select SMC processor, and SMC Super IO, if not, with untouched things, move to the next tab. Here select whatever green. And if you are using AMD Navi graphics, means 5000 series or 6000 series graphics card, you will have to use the following boot arcs. Now moving to the audio tab, here if you have a USB audio, you need not to do anything here. But if you have your onboard audio like me, here mine is Realtek 887, which means I'll need to have Apple ALC, and for this codec, ALC ID will be 99, list of audio codec, with ALC ID, has been added in description. Next to that is Ethernet. And here my Ethernet controller is from Realtek, and the device ID is 8168, for which I'll use Realtek RTL8111. Now, moving to USB, select USB inject all, it is also must have text. After that Wi-Fi and BT comes, as I don't have any Wi-Fi and BT module, so it's not needed for me. But if you do have any supported Wi-Fi BT module, you'll also not need it. But if you have any supported module, which requires additional drivers, you'll have to use first text, as common for fixing Wi-Fi, with any Mac OS version, and for BT, you'll have to use, Patch RAM 3, and both last texts, for Mac OS Catalina, and Mac OS Big Sur, and for the previous Mac OS from Catalina, you'll have to use Patch RAM 2, along with last two texts, and for Mac OS Monterey, you'll have to use Blue Tool Fix Up text, for fixing the BT, instead of these BRCM texts, and it has to be added manually. Last is extras, and this text isn't for Intel buddies, so let's jump to firmware drivers tab. Here, if you have UEFI BIOS, both of the texts are mandatory. And if your target PC uses legacy BIOS, leave both enabled, and also select all in the legacy tab. Next is SM BIOS tab, but here I will not do anything, as in later time, I'll have to configure it in the plist, and the last is additional boot args, and here again. You need not to do anything as the mandatory args will be automatically added. Now just click on Generate EFI, and the EFI will be generated. Now, open, Open Core Package Folder, then Docs, then ACPI Samples, and then Binaries. And from here, 
select the SSDTs required for your PC, and then copy it. Usage list of these SSDTs is linked below. Open the generated DFI folder, then OC, and then ACPI, and here paste all the SSDTs. And now, open config.plist, with correct open core configurator version. Here, click on scan and browse option, and locate the SSDTs. After adding the SSDTs, jump to kernel tab, and here, in Arch select any instead of x86 and 64. Also, select auto from drop down in kernel watch. Here, if you're using 11th generation Intel processor, you'll need to use CPU ID data, and CPU ID mark, both are provided in description. If your target desktop is from Dell, enable this quirk, and if it is from HP, you'll have to use this one, and if your target is an older PC, Sandy Bridge or before, you'll have to use this one. Now go to miscellaneous tab, and then security, and here choose to disabled and secure boot model. Now, go to NVRAM tab, and select the last UUID entry, and from here, delete the value for preserved language keyboard, key. And now go to platform info tab, and here, select the correct SMBIOS for your PC, for example, mine is an Intel Core i3-10100F, and the nearest processor to that is this one, so I'll be using iMac 21. After the data loads, Check add this section in config.plist option. And again if your target PC is from Dell, use custom option, in update SM BIOS mode. Now go to memory tab, and remove all the values, or select unknown data type from options. Also, remove the existing entry, and then go to data hub tab. Check add this section option, remove the processor type number, and again check add this section option. And lastly, go to UEFI tab. And here again, keep in mind to enable this work, if your target PC is from HP and enable this one, if your target machine is pre skylake and you're done, save the config plist by closing open core configurator, also an extended guide will be coming soon, so stay tuned.